Venom is regarded and labeled by many as one of Spider-Man's greatest foes. I mean, just look at his menacing and grand debut in the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man issue 300. Look at his costume, representing an utterly twisted version of the web-headed wall crawler we hold so dear. Look at his sinister smile as he pummels Spidey into the ground. He thirsts only for the death and pain of Peter Parker. They are Venom, and there's nothing to stop them. Except for the fact that Venom has been a hero since, like, the early 90s. Even though the character's design and demeanor just scream hatred for Spider-Man, Venom has actually been a good guy for most of his comic book lifespan. Not only is the character an allegory for toxic relationships and the consuming damage of hate, but is also a symbol of redemption and positive change. A real reminder that we shouldn't judge people by their looks alone. And I think that is a genuinely beautiful thing. But just because Venom represents something positive, it doesn't mean that his comics as a hero were good. The two miniseries, Lethal Protector and Funeral Pyre, were kind of interesting, but I kind of felt like the other ones I read were such a waste of my time. Venom comics from the 90s, at least the ones I read, feel very much like the same cool looking action recycled over and over and over again. Fortunately, the character has been thriving in the past 10 years or so. In 2011, Rick Remender and Colin Bunn made Flash Thompson, a war veteran who lost his leg saving a fellow soldier's life, who is most famous for bullying Peter Parker in high school, take up the mantle of Venom. It's a redemption arc for the character that I personally adore, because not only is the action cool, but Flash is an actual character we sympathize with. We appreciate Flash Thompson's effort of trying to turn his life around and be a good person and hero, despite his alcoholism and abusive past holding him back. The book really makes you feel the weight of every situation, and it is probably one of the first ones that made me jump out of my seat in fear of what was going to happen to the character. Peter Parker, Betty Brandt, and Mania act as really good friends to Flash, and the antagonists in the series, like Hobgoblin and Jack-o'-lantern, are genuinely terrifying and memorable. It's not a perfect series, seeing as I find the event Minimum Carnage and most of the Damon Hellstrom stuff really boring, but I think it is one of the most underrated comic book runs of recent years. The mainline Venom series that succeeds this is also genuinely amazing stuff. It's written by Mike Costa, with art primarily by Gerardo Sandoval and Mark Bagley. The only reason that I can actually mention the artist this time around is because the other one went through so much different artists that it would take too much time <laughs> mentioning them all. But anyway, I really enjoyed this comic book series because it's very balanced in terms of tone. Sure, you have a fair share of edgy and dark stuff like usual, especially with a symbiote attaching itself to Lee Price at the beginning, but when the symbiote goes back to Eddie Brock, you also get funny jokes and silly set pieces to balance the character's darkness, and it's genuinely hilarious stuff. He even teams up with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, which is a crossover I did not know I needed. The action is absolutely fantastic, and the story is exciting. I was not bored a single time, which is genuinely impressive. The event crossover that ties in with the series is also the coolest and dopest thing ever, bringing all the important characters in the past two runs to have this one epic story that culminates in this even more epic team up with twists and turns, and it's great. The event also contains the most wholesome and mushy stuff I've ever seen in a Venom comic, so 
But you know I like this series a lot. If you want to read a shorter Venom series that is action-packed, exciting, and fun, this would be the one for you. But somehow, there was a Venom comic in the past few years that was even more popular than these two. It didn't just bring in new fans and sell well, but it took the industry by storm. Written by Donny Cates with art by Ryan Stegman and many others, this Venom series that started in 2018 and ended in 2021 is probably the biggest that character has ever been. We open with Eddie Brock unemployed and living in a terrible condition. There's something wrong with his symbiote. He loses control of it sometimes and it becomes whatever this is. This is a sign. A sign that the god of the symbiotes is coming. A god by the name of Null. Null is trapped by his own symbiote who realize he's a bad person. But when he puts Grendel, a giant terrible beast, back together, he's coming to destroy Earth and everything that's in it. Venom is at his wit's end, fighting a battle he has almost no chance of winning. This is probably the darkest Venom story ever. And why do I even like it? I enjoy some violent media, like B-Stars, Kick-Ass, and Primal. I also love video games, like Yakuza 0 and The Witcher 3. But I'm personally not a big fan of this horrific and terrifying art style. Even though the art is cool here, it's just too much for me, personally. I'm not really the target demographic for this kind of stuff. And yet, I find myself gravitating toward it, despite my disdain for its darkness. The reason why I came back for more was because it made me care for Eddie Brock as a character. The wound gets harder to heal. The scab rips away every day. You wake up and remember you're alone. Donny Cates' Venom Run is not just about this epic, grand action thriller, but also about Eddie's loneliness. It makes sense why Eddie is this way. His fear of being alone fuels his decision to constantly bond with the symbiote. This loneliness is further delved into when we see Eddie's tragic past in the book. He killed a boy while driving, and his dad got bankrupt as a result. He never forgave Eddie for that, constantly beating him and putting him down. But the worst thing about all of this is that even the symbiote betrays him. Let's scale back a bit. This series is known for fixing a lot of the tiny details of Venom's past, such as telling us why Venom has yucky green stuff on his mouth all the time, which is actually the way the symbiote excretes waste, so that's pretty cool. The specific problem that was fixed though that I want to talk about is something that doesn't appear in a Venom comic, but a Nova one. In the 1999 Nova series, which only ran for seven issues because Nova, Eddie Brock's younger sister, Mary Brock, is featured. This doesn't make any sense. Even in the famous Venom comic, Lethal Protector, we know that Eddie's mom dies while giving birth to him. It's the root cause of why Eddie's father is heartless and mean toward him. How could Eddie have a younger sister when his mom died right after he was born? Well, Donny Cates fixes this in the series by making Mary an illusion that the symbiote gives Eddie Brock. Venom makes Eddie Brock believe Mary existed and died from cancer so that Eddie would always depend on Venom and stick with him forever. It's a toxic relationship that is as complicated as toxic relationships in real life. 
There's also the fact that the Venom symbiote prefers Flash Thompson over Eddie. So even if Eddie is bonded with the symbiote, he knows that he's only second best. And things only get more dramatic in Eddie's personal life. When visiting his dad, he sees a kid named Dylan living with him. He assumes that's his brother, but it turns out that Dylan is his son. When the Venom symbiote bonded with Eddie's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, in the past, the symbiote impregnated her with Eddie's sperm. It's absolutely hilarious when you think about it, but do you know what this means? Eddie has to juggle all this traumatic loneliness, this null situation, and he has to try to be a good dad to his newfound son all at the same time. It's like the hardest aspects of life. Overwhelming, draining, and hopeless. You want to see Eddie succeed and overcome this harsh situation. Not just for himself, but for his son as well. That, my friends, was just recapping the first 12, 12, I don't have 12 fingers to follow. That was just recapping the first 12 issues of the series. And it only gets better. Almost every story arc in this run is absolutely bonkers and insane. The stakes have never been higher, and I don't think they ever will be. Alternate timelines, multiple symbiotes, and two major, and I mean major, events. I actually dislike events, but I can't help but love Absolute Carnage and King in Black. Eddie really steps up in both these event comics, and it's so epic to see. Even though they may be a little tropey and cliche, it is so satisfying to see Eddie Brock finally win in such stylish fashion. Donny Cates' Venom, to me, represents the ideal comic book run. It doesn't just fix weird loopholes of the past, but moves the character to the future adding and expanding upon what we already know and have seen the character do. But even amongst all this loud chaos and danger, the comic makes sure to give us a reason to care about the main character. Eddie isn't just a cog in the plot machine, but a real character with struggles and dreams to be a better person. You ask if I'm a good guy or a bad guy, and well, I mean, if I didn't think I was the bad guy when I was trying to kill Spider-Man, how could I trust myself to answer it now? I think the truth is that I so want to be. I want people to look at me the same way they look at him, at Spider-Man. They've seen it. They see him and they know everything is going to be okay. They look at me and I don't know, maybe I don't think I'm good enough of a guy to be a good guy. But I'm trying. We're trying. Every day. I have a son. His name is Dylan. He's... He's my whole world. He looks at me like that, you know? How people look at him, at Spider-Man. I'm not exactly father of the year or nothing, but he thinks I'm a good guy, I think. So, you know, that's been, that's been good, actually. Challenging, but good. This series has the most grim and terrifying moments in Venom canon, but it also has the most touching and emotional moments you would ever witness in a Venom story. Donny Cates' Venom is not about null and carnage and destructive action, because at its core, it's a story about a dad struggling to raise his son right in a grim and wicked world, gnawing and clawing to drag them down. It's a powerful and genuinely unforgettable tale. I never thought Venom could be this good.
Even though I'm not gonna walk around in a Venom t-shirt anytime soon, I can't help but stand in awe at the sheer quality of these past few mainline Venom series. These writers and artists have turned one of the most style over substance characters ever into a beloved icon in the comic book space. Venom in the past decade or so has been a true labor of love that has paid off in the most stylish and epic fashion. But this video is bigger than just Venom. This video is really about what these three comics stand for. There has been this narrative being spun by comic book fans, especially on YouTube over the past few years, that comics have been declining in quality. And sure, there are a lot of genuinely terrible comic books out there that I would never recommend to anyone. There will always be garbage books that are put out and comics that just aren't for you. But I feel like there are so many amazing stories that not just equal that bad, but outweigh the bad stuff. These three mainline Venom titles are special to me because it is a testament against this narrative that many people believe in about the comic book industry. Just looking at these past 12 years of Marvel alone, we have had genuinely solid runs of characters that have always been amazing, like Daredevil, but we've had characters like Vision, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and the Hulk who have been taken in completely different directions and have been regarded as must-read comics. We've had miniseries like Spider-Man Life Story that have become instant classics, as well as a plethora of new characters that I can't help but adore. And well, my friends, that is only scratching the surface. I've not mentioned the huge number of amazing comics from DC and indie publishers that have been made with such love, passion, and care for the art form in these past few years. Comics that have possibly even changed people's lives for the better. My point is, this narrative needs to shift. I agree wholeheartedly that we should criticize the comics that we don't like and complain about the industry changes that we abhor. Criticism and freedom of speech is good, but we need to make sure to talk about the great stuff as well. To commend and appreciate the creators that spend their everyday lives making wonderful stories for us to enjoy. We need to give more credit and to make people aware of the countless amazing graphic novels and series that not enough people know about. There are so many comics to love out there. It's just a matter of finding them and talking about them. I think doing this will be a big leap forward when it comes to making the comic book fandom a more positive and loving space for all of us to be in. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it since no one really watches these. If you want to know why I said specifically that I appreciated the mainline Venom titles, or because the other ones, they're not that good. Uh, Venom Space Knight is mediocre, and anything related to Venomverse is absolute garbage to me. I mean, everything I've read so far, uh, which are which is Prelude and the actual event, it, it, it's not good, not, not good. But that only is just a small portion of Venom uh, for the past 12 years, so I think, you know, I, th I think this video is still kind of correct, you know? Uh, but yeah, you need to check those three runs out if you have some free time. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe, uh, you know what, uh, maybe you can, like, comment a comic that you enjoyed uh, recently or something. So this could maybe be a forum or, like, a place to go to look for recommendations. Anyway, I I'm rambling too much. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joshua C, and I'll see you in the next comic book video.